In this video, I'm going to explain the difference between CARES and CTAC and give my opinion for which one of these procedures is better. Now, CARES is corneal allogenic intrastromal ring segments. This is a procedure that was described in 2017 by this brilliant Indian ophthalmologist, Dr. Susan Jacob. And the concept behind this operation, CARES, was that Intax was this good operation for patients with keratoconus. It helped the shape of the cornea improve. It helped the vision get better. But there were limitations to Intax. These little plastic rings that you would put in the cornea, you could get glare or dysphotopsia from these segments. You could get erosion or extrusion of the segments over time. Um, and you could only put these segments in corneas that were of a sufficient thickness for fear that if you implanted these little rings in corneas that were too thin or steep, you would be more likely to get problems with erosion and extrusion. So there's a relatively small number of patients who were candidates for this operation, which made a modest difference in the quality of vision. So Susan thought that that operation could be significantly improved by, instead of using these plastic rings, instead using rings made out of human donor corneal stroma. The advantage of using donor corneal stroma is you can put much thicker segments in the cornea. They're not going to erode. They're not going to extrude. And as a result, you can get much greater flattening. And because they're the same refractive index as the patient's cornea, you're not going to get the dysphotopsias. So this was a brilliant idea for improving an already popular, well-established operation intact. Now, CTAC is an operation that began in some form around 2016. The, the acronym is Corneal Tissue Addition Keratoplasty. As it was originally described, it involved putting this discus of corneal tissue into the middle of a recipient cornea. It was kind of like the opposite of smile. Rather than taking a corneal lenticule out, you would put a corneal lenticule in. In the past couple of years, though, that original idea has been refined. And now, rather than putting this big plate of tissue into the cornea, instead, now with CTAC, it's also just this little ring strip of tissue. So the tissue looks pretty similar, actually, with CARES and CTAC. But the big difference is with CTAC, that donor tissue, the donor corneal stroma that's inserted as a ring, Number one, it's gamma irradiated. So that's at the eye bank when it's being prepared, it's gamma irradiated. And theoretically, that sterilizes it. That may make it better for you know, preventing contamination. But the other thing is the tissue is prepared in the eye bank, and the patient is prepared in the operating room using a laser. So a femtosecond laser is used to cut the donor tissue, and it's also used to cut the channel and the recipient cornea. And theoretically, there's some advantages using a laser to cut the channels and prepare the tissue. Uh, the idea is that it's more customized in that way. So you have these two competing ways to flatten the cornea, CTAC and CARES. So which one is better? Well, in my opinion, CARES is the better operation. And the reason that I think CARES is the better operation is because pretty much everything you can do with CTAC, you can also do with CARES. For instance, you can use a femtosecond laser to prepare the recipient eye to make the channels. In fact, in Susan's original paper describing CARES, she did use a femtosecond laser to prepare the recipient eye. And you can also use a laser for CARES if you want to prepare the donor tissue. I mean, that, that's already been published a bunch of times. Dr. Shady Awad has published all femto CARES. So you can use the laser for the procedure if you want, you know, so that's not a reason to prefer CTAC. But I think that there are reasons to prefer CARES. And the first reason is, is that I think it's better not to gamma irradiate the tissue. And I think that gamma irradiation, although seemingly an advantage, is actually a disadvantage. And the reason is, is when you get a CTAC tissue that's prepared and sent to you, it's this floppy, wet, thick noodle. And when you try to insert this floppy, wet, thick noodle in the recipient eye, it's not so easy to push it into place. It's very difficult, actually, to thread it through a single incision. So frequently, you have to make multiple incisions in the cornea, one to push the segment, and then another incision a little bit further away to pull it the other half of the way. So it's more difficult to insert. 
And the other thing that I don't like about the gamma irradiation is because the tissue comes to you thick and wet and sloppy, it's more difficult to insert a big chunk of tissue. Whereas with CARES, in a video that I'll show you, it's easier to insert a larger amount of tissue. So you may get more flattening with CARES than you get with CTAC. The other thing that I like about CARES as opposed to CTAC is I like not using the femtosecond laser. It's nice not to use the laser, actually. And the reason why it's nice not to use the laser is a few fold. Number one, not everybody has access to the laser. So you kind of hate to have a procedure that lots of people are technologically constrained against for people who don't have the laser. Number two, there are some theoretical safety reason why the laser may not be as good as a manual technique for segment channel creation. And that is when you are using a manual method to dissect a pocket in the recipient cornea, you're sort of spreading bluntly a potential space into the cornea. Whereas when you use a laser, you're cutting through the fibers of the cornea. And remember, keratoconus is a disease in which the cornea is weaker and thinner than it should be. And so if you can avoid cutting through the cornea with a laser, that may be a better procedure. So for these reasons, I think that CARES is actually better than CTAC for many patients because you don't have to use a femtosecond laser, so you don't have to charge the patients this extra click fee money. And you're bluntly dissecting a space in the cornea rather than cutting through the fibers. This is a patient who traveled from Arizona to see us just a week or two ago to have um, CARES done in both eyes, and this is the operation. Actually, the day before, we had done cross-linking on this eye, and here he is back in clinic the next day to have the CARES procedure done. So we are doing this procedure in our office. We have an office-based operating environment, and we are administering a little bit of sub tenons anesthesia for comfort. That's an optional thing. You know, CARES is not typically a painful procedure. It's totally fine, and we've done this many times just with topical lidocaine or tetracaine as the anesthesia. But it's very easy just to give a little block, and it keeps the patients comfortable for a few days. In particular, there's this medicine that I talk about a lot. It's called Expirel. It's liposomal bupivacaine. It's a numbing agent that keeps the eye anesthetized for three days. So it makes a huge difference in a lot of people's comfort if you give them this numbing agent around the eye for a few days. So once that subtenons injection is administered, now we're getting the eye ready to create the channels for segment insertion. So we're going to dry off the surface of the cornea. This is a zone marker and we're just making a little epithelial impression right there in the center of the eye and that indentation is just for centering purposes. It allows us to look down, we'll dot the center of that crosshair, and we're going to use that as a landmark to help us line up the subsequent instruments that we use so that we can create the channel just where we want. So normally the way that I make the channel is I print out the patient's preoperative pentacam topography and I look at it right there on the operating room table. And what I'm evaluating is I'm looking to see where the steep part of the patient's cornea is. And I draw a little crescent shape right on the steep part of the cornea. And I try to line up that segment right on the steep part of the cornea so that the segment will straddle the bulge on the steep part of the cornea. So that surgical planning, I'm assisted in that by our PA. We have this great PA who works at our practice. Her name is Emma Scott, and it's kind of nice. She actually does the primary calculations, and I sort of look over her shoulder. And, and it's nice we have sort of our, both of our minds put together to make sure that we agree on what the plan for the operation is. Now, this second indentation or second inked mark you have there on the surface of the cornea there, that's where we're planning on making our incision temporally, and also where the channels can be made. Now, in Susan's original CARES paper, she described always putting two segments in, one superior segment and one inferior segment. Practically speaking for us, we usually just put one inferior segment in because most of our patients just have an inferior keratoconus. So now I'm going to hold the eye with a Thornton ring, okay, and that gives me great control. And I'm using this guarded micrometer knife. And I'm setting this knife to a thickness 
70% of the measured corneal thickness in this location. And the corneal thickness we get from the pinnacam. So we've got this plan for the surgery. We're going to make an incision at, in this case, it's probably about 10 o'clock on the clock face. So right there we know what the depth of the cornea is. So we do a little calculation what's 70% of that depth. And that's what we set the micrometer blade to. This is a suction ring and we fit it on the surface of the eye. It, it's got a little vacuum tube and it goes to the separate little box which is on a table in, in our procedure room. And it just holds the eye really nice and steady for this next component, which is where we're gonna use this corneal separator, which is a little bit corkscrew in design, and we'll slip it into that one millimeter radial incision that we cut with the guarded diamond knife and then dissect it a bit with that device which I showed earlier. It's, it's actually called a pocketing hook, okay? So here it is. This is a pocketing hook. I'm putting it down into the base of that little incision and I'm just sort of spreading it. It dissects this one millimeter potential space right there adjacent to the incision. And then I'm going to use a second instrument called a symmetric glide. And what we refer to it in the clinic actually is the shoehorn because we stick it into this one millimeter space and then we thread the corneal separator underneath that. People email me, they write to me all the time, other surgeons, and they say, what instrument are you using? Where do we get these instruments? These instruments were made originally for Intax implantation. They are created, they're the intellectual property of this company called AJL in Spain, but they have distributors all over the world, and depending on which country you are, it's a different distributor. I think in the United States, it's Corneagen that makes all of these instruments. So probably you can email them or look on their website and you can get this, the corneal separator, the pocketing hook, the symmetric glide, pretty much everything that we use, okay. So now the incision's been made, the inferior channel has been made, and now it's time to turn to the segments, okay. So these segments are prepared for us by our eye bank. We use this eye bank in Alabama called Advancing Sight Network. I have no connection to them, it's just the eye bank that we use. And they prepare these segments for us, they trephinate them, they stain them, and they dry them. So they come to us like this, like blue toenail clippings, basically. And what's really nice about these is they're rigid, they're stiff. And so just like an intact segment, they're really, really easy to insert, and you just need one incision. You don't need a nasal incision as well as a temporal incision, you just need one. We like them stained blue because that way they're easy to see and to differentiate from the recipient cornea. And drying them is such a key because since it thins the cornea, you know, the cornea is 78% water. So when you dry these segments out, you can slip them in so easy. They're just so thin they go right in. Plus, it lets you put in a much thicker slab of cornea then you could get in there if you were trying to wedge some wet, swollen thing into the cornea. So since we can use bigger pieces of cornea, we get more flattening this way. So this is like the key reason why I think, in my opinion, CARES is better than CTAC, is that the operation is much quicker, it's much easier, it's really not an advantage to gamma irradiate the corneas, in my opinion. It's better to have them thinned and dried and stained with tripan blue. If you're worried about sterility, which I don't think is really a big concern, what the Advancing Sight Network does for us is they actually submerge these little segments in betadine before they stain them and dry them. So actually they're sterilized with betadine, which is how we sterilize the eye anyway. Um, so you don't probably need ga gamma irradiation to do that. Um, but you know, the other reason why I like CARES is I, I prefer not to use the femtosecond laser. I like to do this procedure by hand. It's quicker to do it by hand. It's cheaper for the patients to do it by hand. I feel like I have better control. I'm not cutting through the fibers of the cornea. I'm just sort of spreading a potential space that way. So I think that maybe this is just, um, uh, you know, uh, making a big to-do out of nothing. I think CTAC is a great operation. Um, you know, it's much better than DALC. It's much better than PK. Um, but, you know, people ask me all the time, what, what's the difference between CTAC and CARES? This is the difference. And I think if you're thinking about which of these two operations to start with, 
probably the simple thing to do is to start with cares.